Good morning, happy Vlogmas day nine? I'm gonna say nine, I think it's nine. It's Friday and Fridays are my work from home day so I get to be a big lazy bum while also doing things like a load of laundry or wiping down the kitchen in between this. I thought I would show you my morning routine because I don't have to feel rushed today. This is typically how I wake up. I put clothes on <laughs> and I did pee because you don't need to see me do either of those things, but I haven't done anything else. I haven't brushed my hair, I haven't brushed my teeth. I need to do all those things. I need to put food in my mouth. I need to put caffeine in my mouth. So let's do that. This is not normally how I would show you my morning beauty routine, but my bathroom is extremely loud and the lighting is really bad. So you're currently on my duvet. Even if I'm not working from home, this is typically what my morning beauty routine looks like. It's pretty quick. I'm in and out of the bathroom in as little time as possible. And I always start with dry shampoo if my hair is looking a little bit oily. The one I've been reaching for lately is by Moroccan Oil and it is their dry shampoo for light tones. So if you have darker hair, this may not be good for you. I will say I really appreciate this because it has a little bit of a purple tint to it, which I did not know about until I started spraying it on my hair. I think it makes a lot of sense for someone like me who highlights their hair. Having that little bit of a purple hue helps to kind of counteract some of the brassiness that blondes tend to develop. I love the smell of this. If you've ever used Moroccan oil products, you're familiar with their iconic smell. And I've been really pleased with this dry shampoo. I think it does a really nice job. It doesn't leave my hair feeling gross or tacky. It helps soak up the oil. And honestly, I do this first. If I'm using dry shampoo, I spray it in first all over my hair. I don't touch it. I don't rub it in right away. I kind of let it sit and do its thing and marry, <laughs> if you will, before I rub it into my scalp or even brush through it. Then I wash my face and I've been using the Origins Checks and Balances Frothy Face Wash. You've heard me talk about it before. A little tiny bit goes a long way. It leaves my skin feeling nice and clean without drying it out. And I especially find that helpful this time of year when the weather is a lot drier and the air that we're pumping out inside is also drier. Then for an extra shot of moisture, I will lightly spray the Aveda Botanical Kinetics Hydrating Treatment Lotion. I've been using this for a couple of years. I really enjoy it. I just missed a little bit over my face after it's cleansed and I think it kind of helps give my skin that extra shot of moisture or hydration that it needs before going in with a moisturizing cream. The moisturizer that I love and swear by is by Clinique and it's the Tur Turnaround Overnight Revitalizing Moisturizer. The only thing that doesn't really uh, make this a daytime moisturizer is the fact that it doesn't have SPF, but my foundations and my BB creams all do, so I'm not too worried about it. It's an excellent cream. It doesn't feel too heavy. It sinks into the skin nicely, but it also doesn't sink in so much that you feel like you haven't put anything on your skin and it lays really well underneath the makeup. I can't rave about this enough. Even when I'm trying other things and I feel like something has irritated my skin, I go right back to using this. And then the last step is a lip balm. And to be completely honest, I've been using this more and more lately and it's just not my favorite. I've been using it because I have it, but I honestly think I might give this to a friend if they don't find that too disgusting. It's the Biosance Rose Vegan Lip Balm. It does not have a rose scent. It's, in fact, it's scentless. And it has a very petroleum-like texture. It's just not my favorite. It leaves my lips feeling drier than they are. And I don't really have, I don't really struggle with chapped lips. But lately I have been, and this is not doing anything. I'm wondering if it's making it worse. Honestly, the Kiehl's Butter Mask for Lips is what I'm going to go back to. I might even buy it today online because I'm desperate. And I can't have cracked lips this time of year especially. That's my little routine. It takes me probably all of three or four minutes to do all these steps. I also brush my teeth at this time. And if you're curious about my toothbrush, I can show you because it's a little bit unique. Maybe it's weird to show you my toothbrush. I'm not really sure, but I feel like because it is such a different shape and I get a lot of comments on it when people come to my house, I only thought it made sense to tell you because I attribute this with my really good dental health oral health, whatever you want to call it. Knock on bed. I've never had a cavity and I've been using this left-handed toothbrush for years and years 
left-handed because you put your thumb here and then when you're brushing your teeth the angle is perfect for someone who's left-handed you may not realize that you need <laughs> an angled toothbrush until you try this and honestly mike gave me a lot of grief when i first got it but he has since purchased the right-handed toothbrush for himself and he reorders them he is in charge of the toothbrush ordering in this house and he's constantly going for the radius right-handed toothbrush the head is extremely large and you're probably like those bristles don't look like they're anything special it looks like you should brush your dentures with this i'm telling you what your teeth will never feel cleaner i don't know what it is about it i don't know if it's the angle i don't know if it's the the uh, fibers of the toothbrush itself i think it's made from coconut I will put on the screen if I'm wrong, <laughs> but I'll link it below because I think it's it's a fabulous toothbrush. And Mike has also said like, you're right, my teeth have never felt cleaner. They're like squeaky clean, it's crazy. Good morning. Did you have a nice sleep? There's a tail wag. Do you wanna eat? Let's have breakfast. So I've come downstairs and this is where I will remain for the rest of the day, essentially, until it's time for me to get ready. I will do any picking up around the kitchen or the dining room that needs to be done. It's very difficult for me to work when I have an unclean or cluttered environment. So I usually set aside 10 or 15 minutes in the morning to get that out of the way so I'm not distracted throughout the day. I'm gonna make my coffee. You guys know that I love my Nespresso machine. I have the Nespresso Cities. I'm not sure if that's a current model, but the Virtua line, I think it's better. That's just personal preference. The pods are less expensive and it's more compact. I also don't feel the need to have a Keurig style coffee maker. I got the Nespresso machine strictly for espresso. So if we want coffee, we just make pour over. I'm gonna whip up some breakfast. I'll have a couple of eggs. That's usually what I do on a day at home or if Mike is cooking breakfast in the morning, he just whips me up whatever he's having. I went to the library last night to return a few books and also pick up some new Christmas reads since the holiday is coming up and I just plan to be kind of hunkered down and staying cozy inside by our new fireplace which I will show you, I'm so excited. It's not here yet, but I ordered it last night. Like, Merry Christmas to us, I'm so pumped. Super excited about it. It's been something that's been on my list for at least a year, and we finally just bit the bullet and, and did it. As like a little treat to ourselves. We don't buy each other gifts. We're just gonna put a bow on this and say, Merry Christmas, Mike and Danielle, from yourselves. <laughs> Anyhow, long story long, I wanted to show you the books that I picked up, shall we? Actually, the first one that I wanted to show you was not one that I got at the library. It was actually one that was gifted to me by a coworker, which I just thought was so kind. She and I had a really good discussion last week about living in Appalachia. And yes, I say Appalachia, I don't say Appalachia. I lived in West Virginia for a really long time. That's just the way that I have always said it. Say what you want. We're both talking about the same things and that's what matters. I have been wanting to read Hillbilly Elegy for a really long time and I confess to her that it's been on my list but I keep getting sidetracked because I'm reading other more fun fiction novels and what I need to do is just bite the bullet and read this and the next morning when I went into work she had wrapped this and put this on my desk and I thought that was so nice of her. So I'm definitely going to carve out some time to read this. I think it was written by a man who grew up in Ohio. Just excited to see if he shares any similarities with the way that I was brought up. I don't know, maybe someday I'll do a video about about my childhood and teen years. I'm not sure if that's even interesting, but it was quite different than, than many other people that I know. So that's that. Then I got some more lighthearted reads. I actually picked this one up last year by Katherine Anderson. It's called The Christmas Room. It just looks like a stinking cute Christmas book. It could be trash, I have no idea, but the camper sold me, as did the dog. So let me know in the comments if you've read this. And then on the shelves, I found Jenny Colgan's Christmas at Rosie Hopkins Sweet Shop with these cute little darling cookie mittens on the cover. I've read some of Jenny's work in the past and I just find it entertaining and easy, but also, you know, like fun and lighthearted. So I thought this would be a really great one to read after I'm finished the winter street series the winter series by ellen hildebrand i'm almost done i'm gonna getting ready to start book four so that'll be a fun one now on to coffee and if you've been watching us for a while like our regular videos not vlog style you will know that this is one of the best purchases that i've made i have been saying that about a lot of stuff i really i pride myself on the ability to find things that i genuinely love and use and find a use for and this mug tree from amazon is one of them because 
I collect coffee mugs. This is a very small assortment of them. I'm actually gonna go for this guy today. It is this little Christmas goose and hen and duck mug, and it's by Sarah Miller London. I got it at Greetings and Readings before they went out of business. If you live in the Baltimore area, you might remember Greetings and Readings. It was one of my favorite bookstores, but they went out of business. And the reason for the mug tree is because I have a problem collecting mugs. This probably isn't even all of them, and they're stacked way back in there. I collect them. It's my favorite thing to get when we're traveling. I also have a few in here. If I go to a museum, like that red one, the one in the back with the red dog is from the Andy Warhol Museum. I don't know, it's just my thing, okay? And so that's my thing. It's not a big deal. So we had to find places to put the mugs because Mike had suggested put, packing some of them away for a few months at a time and then like recycling through them. And I was like, no, they all need love. <laughs> because mugs have feelings evidently. And so finding that mug rack on Amazon not only filled up an empty wall in our dining room, but it allowed me to display them in a way that you know you otherwise wouldn't be able to do behind a, a cabinet. So I'll link it below. A lot of people have said they've purchased it since seeing it, so I hope that you love it if you're one of those people. And if you know someone who's like me and loves mugs, I think a mug rack or a mug tree or some way for them to display their mugs and yet still keep collecting them is a really great gift. Okay, this is the fireplace that we ended up going with. It is by the brand Real Flame and it's the Fresno Electric Fireplace and Media Center in the color Walnut. They also make it in black and white. I did a lot of online research and I feel like this brand was very highly rated. It sold many places. You may have seen it on Wayfair, but I found mine at Bed Bath & Beyond. And the reason I purchased it there was because even though the starting price was more expensive at $736, I think actually the original starting price is like $1,400 or $1,500, which is crazy. If you signed up with a new email address, you could get a 20% off coupon and that's what I did and this made it cheaper than Wayfair even though Wayfair's starting price was more affordable and I found a 10% off coupon there. I did the math and this still worked out being the best deal. I did a lot of research on the fireplaces and I was attracted to quite a few on Wayfair although I found that they looked like when you looked up close, a lot of them did look really cheap. Like you could tell they were made from MDF and I don't have anything against that, but I wanted something sturdy. I'm not really, I'm not putting my TV on top of it because our TV is, is mounted to the wall, but I just didn't want something that I didn't feel like I couldn't bump into without breaking. And when you really look at reviews and you really look at the material and you look at the weight, you can kind of, you can just kind of tell which fireplaces were only two or three hundred dollars for a very good reason. I also found it very important that I wanted to have a remote or some way to control the fireplace and adjust the settings. Some of the fireplaces you couldn't alter the temperature like turning it on was on, turning it off was off. You didn't get like an ambient flame without heat. I just had a lot of variables that I wanted to consider. I wanted to have an auto shut off in case it got too hot for some reason and didn't burn down our house. There are a lot of variables to consider, even though it's not a, it's not technically a real flame, it's electric. You don't have gas or anything to worry about. It's still a heat source and you still wanna be careful. So we did a lot of research and the reviews for, for the real flame brand just seem really nice. Like they seem like a very reputable company. The reviews were always really good. And so I'm hopeful that it will it will end up being really great and you guys know I will of course let you know one way or the other if it's good or bad because this it's like it's a big investment you don't want to shell out 600 plus dollars for something that kind of sucks and so another thing like you have to check the BTUs you have to see if it can run on a regular standard outlet if it needs its own outlet who knows some of the ones I was reading were like this doesn't really sound safe <laughs> So do your research, highly recommend. I mean, I looked for weeks. I've looked for a year probably, honestly. And I looked all places. I did Wayfair, I did Overstock, I did Electric Fireplace Direct, I think is one of them, Lowe's, Home Depot, all those furniture stores. I love that Bed Bath & Beyond didn't have this as an exclusion for the coupon because 20% is a really substantial amount to save on a $736 fireplace. And I got the walnut color. It came in black and white as well. This morning, I woke up at 
I don't know what's wrong with me. I gotta figure it out. It's driving me crazy. And so I could tell when I woke up that I felt pretty rested. I'll crash later, but I felt good at the time. I knew there was no way I was gonna be able to go back to sleep. So I started watching the highlight videos from Ellen and she's doing her 12 days of giveaways right now, which is always so much fun. And on one of them, she was wearing this sweater with a dog on it that looked like my little baby. And so I went down a rabbit hole and discovered that I knew she had her own brand. I, for some reason, only thought she was doing like homeware, which I did find weird, and shoes, which made sense because she's a big shoe person. But she does other things as well. And I found this sweater that I love and I want to own because it looks like my little doggy. There it is. I thought it kind of looked like Barkley. She was wearing it on the show and I was like, okay, I need this sweater. And so then when I found it, first of all, I was like, wow, Ellen, $98 for a sweater. But then it's freaking sold out. So that sucks. The only other task I have today, apart from work, is making something for wine club. I'm in wine club. It's the fifth year of wine club. I'm so excited about that. And we usually get together the first Friday of every month just to bullshit and drink wine and eat good food. And we moved the date this month for a variety of reasons, but the hostess with the mostess is making chili. And so I thought I've been wanting to make these for so long and I think chili would be the perfect accompaniment. So I'm making these delicious looking bacon jalapeno scones from Baker by Nature. And if Baker by Nature sounds familiar, it's because she made those delicious brown butter pecan cookies that I made and loved. Let me show you this. How great do these look? I mean, I think that these were meant for chili. Anyhow, I've never made scones before. I've made biscuits. I feel like it's gotta be the same thing. It says that it's a pretty quick recipe, so I'm gonna be doing that at some point today. Okay, that's it for now. I'll check in when something new and exciting happens. Oh, I'm getting a new Rent the Runway shipment today. That's new and exciting. You know, I love to get mail. Yay. Well, I lied. I'm not having eggs this morning. I discovered there was one pack left of this oatmeal I've really been loving. It's by Better Oats and it's the steel cut maple and brown sugar. I really love oatmeal when it's super cold outside and today is that day. And I'm also just feeling a little bit lazy. So I love steel cut oats. I think they taste better than regular rolled oats and they have additional flax seeds in here. You take out the packet and all you have to do is rip off where the black meets the red and pour it into the bowl. But then you wanna save the pouch after it's empty because you're gonna fill it up to that line with water and that's your measuring device to know how much water to put into the oatmeal. So I've filled it with water and I just pour it in and then microwave it for two minutes or two and a half minutes rather. These are the vitamins that I purchased on Amazon. I mentioned them the other day, but I officially received them. Today is day two of taking them. So I can't really speak as to their benefits, but this huge bottle, which is 150 tablets, which is approximately six months worth of vitamins, I think was like $22 on Amazon. The brand is Rainbow Light. They were recommended to me by a friend who's also a dietitian, and this is what they look like. And this is what they look like. They will make your pee this color of green, just FYI. Hi, it's time to get ready. It's time to put makeup on. Do I want to? Not really. Will it make me feel better? Probably. We have almost reached the stage where I can put all of my hair up in a ponytail. You know, just counting down the days. <laughs> the first thing that I did prior to makeup application is apply my Ren Clean Skin Care Perfect Canvas Clean Primer. This is not the first time you've heard me talk about it. It won't be the last. I really love the way that it sits on my skin. I really love how makeup lays on top of it. Because I am between shades and foundation, I'm mixing two today. The first one I'm gonna use is the Revolution Makeup Revolution London Conceal and Define Full Coverage Foundation. My skin is feeling really textured today and I'm not exactly sure why, but I don't love it. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, this is an example of one of those times that I've applied foundation and I just think it looks like shit on my skin. So instead of complaining about it, I'm just gonna go wash it off and I'm gonna start over. I don't do this often, but I'm not, like I think that the first foundation that I use, that Makeup Revolution, I think it's old. I think it's old and I think it needs to be thrown away. Yeah, it, I, don't, I don't know what's going on. It feels weird. I don't know what's going on with my skin. This morning I woke up and I was like, it feels great. And then as the day progressed, I felt like I could see a lot of redness on my cheeks and texture, like not zits, but texture, which it, in my opinion is worse. So I'm scratching the Makeup Revolution foundation. I think I've had it well over a year. It's nearly empty anyways. It could just be an expired product. Also, I think it's worth noting that my face is burning a little bit right now. And I will say, I think I wore it yesterday and the day before, and maybe that's why I'm having some texture because I haven't been changing up my skincare routine. Okay, the camera died while I was doing my makeup. Sorry about that, but I had a really rough go at my makeup today, which doesn't always happen, but when it does, it's like everything seems like it's going wrong. I'm wearing way more eyeshadow than I intended. Uh, I just, I don't know. It's just one of those days and you're allowed to have that. I will link all of the products that I used below, including this lipstick, which I don't think you saw me apply. I think it cut out right at eyeshadow. I will say the eyeshadow I'm wearing has made my eyes look really blue today, which I always love. So I, don't, I won't link that eyeshadow palette because the Bare Minerals shimmer palette that I packed on top is no longer sold. So it really, won't really do any good, but it's just like a taupey gold shimmer shadow that I packed on with my finger. That's it. That was about the only part that won't, right? <laughs> My work day is officially over. I've started it on my scones. So far it's going well and everything is smelling really good. As I said, I've never made them before, but I mean, I feel like if I've made any type of dough, this should be pretty easy. Uh, it came together super quickly, so if you are in need of a savory scone recipe, so far I'm recommending this one. I have cracked a beer because it is Friday. It is Friday the 13th, and I am having a Dewclaw Brewing Company Spruce Willis. It's a double IPA. I really enjoy it. It's a great one. Blah, blah, blah. Plow your hands. No, stir in the yogurt. She says the dough will be shaggy, but not to worry. Oops. Oh! No, 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 no! Don't eat that. Although you can eat it, actually. It's just Greek yogurt. Go for it. Get crazy. Oh, it's shaggy as shit. She was not wrong. Lightly, blah, blah, blah. Soft, sticky, and shaggy. I mean, this isn't like a lump of dough. Do we care about that? This does not look like any dough I've made. I don't think I'm doing this right. This is gonna fucking be a disaster. <sighs> I have never made more of a mess in my life. Keep it together, it'll be fine. I am corn-fused. Oh, the dough looks so shaggy, not to worry. Listen, lady, I need to find the help me section. Reminds me of a pie crust. It's always messy, confusing. There's no doubt it's going to be a moment when you look down at the shaggy flour and butter mess on your table and think, there is just no way this is gonna work out. But it will, I promise. Keep a little bowl of flour. Make sure you use your board as well. Flour before dumping the scone mixture. Be sure your delicate hands are cut up with a little flour before you bring in the dough together. Flour, a little patience will get you far. How? How? <laughs> how? Truly how? I mean, that looks like a fucking scone. Oh, that does it! Oh no, you guys. Oh no. These are gonna be some thin stones. Oh, that was a good one. Oh, that was a good one. My poor, they look like English muffins. They don't look like scones. Now I am going to brush each scone with a little egg. Here's what I have. Are you able to see? I will show you. I will just bring you down here and show you. Brush them with a little egg. 
Oh yeah, it's getting fucking fancy in here. They look like little English muffins to me. I mean, that poor guy there in the middle on the left, he's really flat, but otherwise I think they look pretty okay. Okay, gonna bake them now. Okay, my first batch is in the oven. You know, there's nothing else I can do at this point other than try to make some more, get them on another tray. Actually, I'm gonna wait for these to come out because if they suck, why even power through? I'll show you the final result. <laughs> well, they're out of the oven and they look great and they taste even better. I ate a puny one. There was like one big dud and I ate it and it was really good. So I feel really relieved. They smell so good that I just wanna put my face in them. I think that's a good sign. Look at these flaky little scones slash. I had to make them kind of into English muffin sizes so that everybody in wine club could have one if they wanted. Paul Hollywood could scrape these bottoms and they would not be soggy. He would be really, I think, proud of me. Also, I've not been mentioning this. I have like a whole day and night and day tomorrow to myself because Mike is away on a little boy's trip. I really just recharge when I get some time to myself. So I am so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited to just like not have to, not have to speak if I don't want to. Also, I had one beer and I feel a little drunk. <laughs> What was I saying? Oh, yeah, I just, I think having a night alone is good for you every once in a while. And I haven't had that in a while. And that means that I can, like, I could, I could just do, I could just be, I could just like lay in bed tomorrow all morning long and not talk to anyone. Do you ever feel that way? Are you ever excited when you get time to yourself? Like, solo time like he came home for 10 minutes today to get something and he like dropped a fucking drawer on the ground i was like i can't wait for you to leave i didn't say that but that's what i was thinking i'm also getting my period i'm pmsing this is honestly the perfect time for him to leave because i'm just feeling extra bitchy anyhow my scones turned out great i'm really excited i have some downtime before wine club so i'm gonna read my book i'm powering through with the winter storms I've been looking forward to this weekend in particular for a really long time. And lately I haven't been looking forward to weekends because I feel like we're so busy and I don't really have time to do the things. Not, I don't want to say that because I'm doing things that I want to do. But this weekend in particular, I'm like, these are all things I genuinely want to do. I'm starting it with wine club, which I love. And I'm ending it doing my favorite Christmas tradition of all time, which is going to see the living Christmas tree on Sunday. And I'm going to eat at the lodge, which is honestly one of my favorite restaurants because their chicken tenders are so good <laughs> and I don't even care. Yeah, they're chicken tenders and yeah, they're awesome. And if you've ever been to Bel Air, it's technically Forest Hill, and you've not been to the lodge, just go to the lodge and have their chicken tenders. They're beer battered. They are the juiciest tendery, ten, most tender, succulent, crispy. They're so good. <laughs> Can't wait to eat them. Oh my God, one beer. <laughs> mm. I don't know what's wrong with me. I think like, remember when I said I woke up at 358? I think that that is kicking in. Paired with the one beer, I've got like the midnight crazies even though it's five o'clock in the evening. <laughs> oh my God, I gotta go. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. I hope you're enjoying Vlogmas. Uh, you know, like, watch watch all of them. What's the question of the day? Hmm. What's your favorite holiday tradition? Like, I said mine is going to the living Christmas tree, which if you, you wouldn't know what that is because I don't think that that's a common thing. At the church that my grandparents have belonged to for so long, they have obviously very tall ceilings in the church and they build an enormous Christmas tree with risers. People fill in along the risers and they sing Christmas carols in a tree, in a Christmas tree. And it makes me cry every year. It's just like, it's just magical. I love doing it. For me, it's like, this is Christmas. So leave a comment below and let us know what your holiday tradition is. Like, what is it that you do every Christmas that makes you feel like, okay, it's Christmas. I'm ready. I'm feeling fully in the holiday spirit. Leave it below. I can't wait to hear what it is. Hope you guys are having a great day and we will see you tomorrow. Bye.